Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar. With me is Sonal Bhutra. And these are the headlines at 1.30 p.m. this Wednesday afternoon. The Nifty and the Sensex trade largely flat, even as the mid-caps lag. The Nifty hits a fresh 52-week high intraday as PSU banks. IT services lead gains while metals and FMCG lag. Apollo Tire slips on profit booking and a downgrade by Nomura, while TCNS clothing gets a boost from reports of multiple companies eyeing promoter stake in the apparel retailer. Hindustan Zing builds on gains as its board meets today to consider a second interim dividend. Team Lee's gains on positive management commentary. The management tells CNBC TV 18 general staffing is expected to do well with a gross revenue of 30%, that's the growth, even as it sees flat growth in specialized staffing. All right, those are the top headlines for the markets. Uh, it's flat but with some positive bias. We have seen a 70-point recovery from the lows right now. It is inching towards the day's high. And we have a couple of stocks, the likes of HDFC Bank, Reliance and HDFC. They are currently at the day's high. So these are the big names which are pushing the nifty higher. But mid-caps, they are largely in the red. In fact, they are the ones which are underperforming. Uh, but Reema, we have seen that sharp recovery from the lows. Uh, SGX Nifty, though, was indicating that the start could be in the red. Uh, so we'll have to see. Last one hour will be important. Last one hour. Yesterday, we had that big recovery, right? 100-point yes. recovery. So we're going to cling on to hope uh, that uh, perhaps today is the day that we hit and scale those all-time high levels. The Sensex got so close to it, just about 200 points away, but just unable uh, to make it to that milestone. But let's welcome Rahul Sharma of Equity 99 Advisors to find out what the technical setup looks like right now. Rahul, a couple of experts we spoke to indicated that markets are seeing some signs of fatigue. Volumes are drying up. Uh, how, what is your read on the markets? Yes, good afternoon. See, uh, very rightly said, as you were saying, that uh, right now it's kind of excitement what we are witnessing, but markets are not showing that kind of uh, like movements. Although, uh, if we, uh, for the Nifty, uh, 18,435 is the immediate resistance. And if we get closing above 18,440 or 18,450 levels, I think market will uh, slightly show some bullishness on the upside and when consolidate. Uh, uh, but uh, may, we may also witness some kind of profit bookings as well. So on the downside, Nifty has a strong support at 18,370, followed by 18,290. Uh, but talking about bank, uh, bank Nifty, uh, that has been an amazing outperformer, is showing resistance above uh, like 42,540 uh, and 42,550 levels. I think if you'll get closing above these levels, that will take uh, uh, Bank Nifty to a completely new uh, territory. Uh, right now, it is having support at 42,220 followed by 41,900 levels. And I think banks are doing really great right now. Yes, banks are, and Nifty Bank up around three tenths of a percent. In a market like this, when we are waiting, and usually when we wait for things, they become slower, right? Uh, but for today, what are your technical picks? Uh, yeah, thank you, Sonal. So, see, uh, firstly, from uh, from banking and only, uh, this bank name is not uh, like uh, usually discussed. This uh, name is Karur Vesya Bank, uh, which is currently trading 105 levels. Although this counter has shown a tremendous uh, growth uh, in last four months, and it has rose from the 45 levels to 200 plus levels now. But even now, after the stock uh, uh, doesn't look expensive, and it has it, it ha hasn't gone in an overbought uh, category. So uh, if you see the daily charts, it is showing amazing breakout on a horizontal line. Uh, one should keep stop loss at rupees 100 for the target price of 115 in Karur Vaisa Bank. And the second selection is uh, from the PSU baskets. Uh, this is NBCC. Uh, NBCC, which is trading uh, near 37 levels. I think uh, uh, it has uh, like just given fabulous breakout on the daily charts. Firstly, it has crossed 200 demo today and also have completed a rounding bottom formation. I think it's, it is looking super bullish right now. One should keep stop loss in NBCC at uh, rupees 32 with a target price of rupees 45 to 46 in NBCC. Rahul, thank you very much for that. Let's now uh, call upon Vivek to join us on Midcap Radar and he's going to join us for the segment Midcap Movers. Vivek? Well, uh, good afternoon. You know, while what you're actually seeing at this point of time is quite a bit of a cool off. However, certain segments of the market uh, continue to do quite well. Now, what we're looking at is, you know, two stocks, you know, both genset makers, both of them are doing quite well in the session today, both at a fresh 52-week high. It's on the back of the fact that, you know, companies are now expecting some pre-buying activity to actually 
come in or to kick in before the new emission norms come into effect. And also, you know, the government is going to start banning making of these older diesel gensets, which is why in both of the management committees have indicated that some pre-buying activity is actually being seen in this particular segment. The other segment of the market that's doing very well is actually the entire sugar pack. Uh, so Balrampur Shini, uh, Dwarikesh, as well as Dalmia Bharat, all of them are moving up on much stronger volumes in today's trading session. Also, you know, some of the other stocks that today have hit uh, no, very strong volumes, Gulshan Polio is not a stock that we discuss too often. Orissa Mindals, after a period of uh, strong underperformance, this particular stock today has moved up on strong volumes. And the new listing yesterday, you know, which saw quite a bit, uh, saw a very subdued listing today is back up on good volumes. On the other hand, uh, some of the stocks that have uh, uh, fallen on the back of either, uh, you know, weak earnings or also some muted management commentary, Radico Kaitan is one stock today moving down. And, you know, volumes here too are quite high. Nike continues its downtick. Fortis Healthcare as well as Neil Kamal. These are some of the stocks on the losing side that we are tracking. A lot of action in the mid-cap space. Uh, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through all those details. Uh, let's do one thing, slip into a break. We'll next be joined by Arun Krishnamurthy, who is the MD and CEO at Access Gates Technologies to discuss their quarter two performance. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still tuned into Midcap Radar. And as promised, we'll get in the management of Access Gates Technologies. Uh, the Bengaluru based company is a product engineering solutions provider and it caters to the aerospace, defense, heavy engineering, automotive, energy sectors, among others. Announced its second quarter <coughs> numbers uh, last week along with the acquisition of a Germany based ad solutions for up to 5.5 million euros. To discuss all of this, Mr. Arun Krishnamurthy, who is the MD and CEO of the company, is joining us now. And, the, and about the outlook going forward as well, uh, Mr. Krishnamurthy. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, quarter two has been really strong for you. Uh, sharp margin expansion. You've seen growth across geographies in double digits, except for Canada. I just wanted to ask, what's the outlook going forward, especially in geographies like Europe, which saw a sequential decline, and we've been seeing a lot happening in that particular market as well. And Canada, do you expect this growth to continue going forward? And if yes, what is the revenue growth that you're guiding for in FY23? Yeah, good afternoon and firstly, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to talk to you. So like you said, we had a very strong quarter two results. We have grown 5.7% uh, 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 over Q1, 43.4% uh, over the year-on-year uh, uh, -year over Q2 of last year. So uh, the outlook for us is very good across all the sectors that we service that you mentioned, energy, automotive, defense, semiconductor and energy as well. Uh, we see very strong growth coming in. Uh, we grew at 17.6% last year, last financial year, and we expect to grow uh, more than that uh, into this year as well. Uh, as far as the macroeconomic uh, sentiment in the in Europe is concerned, in the near term, we don't see an impact on that. Our order book is pretty full, and we think we'll be able, able to grow uh, well going into H2. As far as Canada is concerned, there is a client uh, who had a, there was a project uh, which closed early, but having said that, that is something which will uh, come back for us. And uh, over the year, we don't have any concerns that there's going to be degrowth on that account as well. So 17, growth more than 17%, that is what you saw last year. Can you quantify it for us? It'll be 20%, 25% since the outlook is so strong. Yeah, we don't uh, we do not do forward guidance on revenues. But uh, let me just say that it will be, it will be better than what it was uh, last year. And uh, we have a very positive trajectory with all our clients and all our verticals. Can you at least tell us if it will be double digit? It will be double digit, yes. It will be more than 17.6%. Okay, so the growth rate for FI23 will be more than the growth rate of FI22, which was about 17%. What's the outlook on uh, margins? This quarter you're tracking margins, EBITDA margins of 20%. Is there scope to expand on these margins? Uh, I think this quarter we saw a heightened margin because there was a one-off in one of our defense businesses. Okay. But if you normalize the margins, it should be at about 15%. And again, uh, as compared to last year, uh, we will see uh, growth in margins as well. So again, a strong performance on the uh, profitability front as well. And uh, these normalized margins of 15% that you saw in Q2, is that the run rate for the rest of the year and F FI24 perhaps? Yes, it, it would be about 15% for the rest of the year. Uh, obviously, okay. we will be looking at uh, 
measures to improve the profitability further because uh, our stakeholders always want to do better. Mm -hmm. So we will be looking at how we can improve that going forward. But for this year, yes, it would be at 15. Okay, so that is about margins and top line. You have made an acquisition this time around. I wanted to understand what the synergies are there. Five and a half, five and a half million euros is the revenue that that company did in FY21. What kind of growth rates has it been seeing? And once it actually gets completed, the acquisition that is, will it improve your margin profile? What are the current margins that this company is making? Yeah, so actually there's a couple of acquisitions. So we're just completing an acquisition of a company called Mistral, right. uh, which is in the embedded space, and they work in semiconductors as well as defense. So that gives us a lot of uh, capabilities on the defense side. And of course, it adds a new vertical for us on semiconductors. So that's uh, something that will get completed uh, in this quarter, in Q3. And uh, as far as the new acquisition is concerned, this is a company in Germany. It's a company called Ad Solutions. Uh, we will be completing the acquisition uh, in Q4. And uh, the reason we're acquiring this is that they have very strong automotive capabilities. They uh, are embedded with uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, German OEMs. And we have ambitions to grow automotive. We have ambitions to grow the Germany market. And that's why it makes a lot of sense for us. It's a company which is actually uh, quite profitable by German standards. So they have early double digit uh, margins. And uh, from that perspective, we will look at how we can grow the business together, bring in synergy revenues, and also take them globally to the other regions that we are uh, servicing. So early double digit margins. So since if it gets completed, the acquisition margins will see an impact for a while then. They will see an impact, but we see enough uh, uh, opportunities in automotive. In fact, uh, if you, uh, you, I'm sure you're aware that the resource market is quite tight. And uh, you know, the more people we can get, the more business we can do. So we are quite optimistic that the opportunity is there. Uh, so we will be able to capitalize on that. Can you talk a bit about your balance sheet? Because you made that Mistral acquisition last year. Now you've got another payout of up to 5.5 million euros. And I believe you have a debt of nearly 200 crore rupees, net debt. Uh, take us through your balance sheet situation. And um, you're looking to raise money to bring down your debt. How are you going to make these payouts? Yeah, so firstly, the acquisition that we're planning with uh, Germany, that will be spread across uh, three years. So it'll be done in two phases. Mm. So we obviously uh, spreading it out is not going to be a one shot kind of thing. There are performance criteria also that we have sort of put in place. Uh, you're right about the debt. The debt that we have is because uh, we needed to complete the Mistral acquisition. And uh, we are in talks with uh, financial institutions and we are, we are sort of uh, confident that we'll be able to service that and raise money for it. We have also appointed uh, Edelweiss uh, as an investment banker, and this is to uh, raise uh, growth capital for us because, like I said, the opportunities are there. The market is very robust and vibrant, and we're looking at uh, growth capital to sort of you know help us invest in our R&D labs, hire senior people, etc. Uh, that's the way forward as far as the balance sheet is concerned. So 200 crore rupees of debt right now. I wanted to understand in the Mistral acquisition, how much have you already paid? Uh, how much is left? And have you acquired the entire ac stake in that particular company or is some left? Yeah, so we have acquired 60% uh, ownership of Mistral as we speak now. And uh, the part to 40% uh, uh, is over the next three months, like I said. So we will be 100% uh, owners of Mistral. And uh, we have serviced about, I would say, two thirds of the company already. So we are raising uh, uh, money to finance the rest of the one third, which should be completed uh, in this quarter. So 100 crores is what you're planning to raise then for the rest of the money that is to be paid for Mistral. That's great. And that will be done in this quarter? Yes, it will <clears throat> be done. In yeah. Uh, so the money that you're looking to raise, you said is 100 crores, right? Mm -hmm. But that will be used to pay off and buy the balance portion of the Mistral debt. Where will you get yes. the additional money that you want to make uh, senior level hires, invest in R&D technology? So actually, there is uh, some component of the 100 crores which will go towards Mistral. Okay. Uh, there is other uh, sources of funding that we already have, which we will be using. So part of this 100 crores will go towards uh, uh, completion of Mistral. And the rest of it will actually go towards the senior hires and labs that we want to set up. Okay, so last question on the balance sheet and the debt, then what does it do to your debt? Because you have made one more acquisition, not the entire part of that 100 crores will go for Mistral. Uh, so will you be taking up more debt or debt is at these levels? 200 crores is the peak level. Yeah, this is the peak level. Uh, we actually see a good uh, profitable business uh, road ahead. The reason we are making these acquisitions is that uh, it will multiply the opportunities that we have. And uh, we're confident that, you know, with that growth trajectory, we'll be able to you know, generate more cash and sort of take the company in the right level. So we don't see more debt coming in. 
this is really to uh, sort of be a force multiplier on the business that we already have. I'm just, I just wanted to follow up on that. So 100 crores that you'll raise will be used some for Mistral acquisition and the rest for senior level hires. What about the Germany acquisition that you're making? How will you fund that? So like I said, that will be spread across uh, next okay. three years. We will have multiple phases. Hmm. So there is going to be no immediate payout. So uh, that is well under control. Yeah. We leave it to that. Thank you very much for joining in and look forward to chatting with you more uh, in the future. Uh, that's the word coming in from Axis Gates, guiding for uh, FI23 revenue growth to be better than 17% and H2 FI23 margins to be close to about 15%. They're also in talks to raise growth capital to the tune of 100 crore. They've appointed uh, Edelweiss as an investment banker, which will help them buy the balance 40% stake in a company called Mistral that they acquired last year, as well as make some investments uh, to grow the company. Slip into a break. On the other side, we'll get you more on the market. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Let's get straight to our mid-cap spotlight segment. Sonal is going to be focusing on Aarti Industries. Numbers were out. Yesterday was yes. a conference call. Yes, and numbers were weak. It's only the specialty yeah. chemicals business that is remaining with the listed entity now because pharma business has been demerged. And even the commentary was not very positive for Aarti Industries. Uh, they said they are witnessing lower demand, especially in their disc uh, not discretionary portfolio, that is, uh, such as pigments, dyes, etc. They do expect demand to recover in the fourth quarter, but not, to the, not back to those people levels. Uh, nitric acid supply, which is one of their major raw materials, there the supply has not improved. Remember, the company is setting up a nitric acid plant to ensure that there is enough supply of that particular raw material. Maintenance shutdown in Jagadia is something that impacted their volumes this time around. Uh, they are seeing lower freight costs and benefit of those lower freight costs will be seen in quarter three. However, there will be no meaningful impact on margins because of these lower costs. Uh, so margins will not see an improvement because of that. Second half of FI23 continues to remain similar to the first half of FI23, so they are not expecting it to be better. Something that other chemical companies told us will be better, according to them. In terms of FI23 guidance, it's a muted guidance, so to say. EBITDA at 1,100 crore rupees. They have a capex of 1,100 to 1,200 crore rupees. And FI24, FI25 EBITDA growth is around 25%. That's the expectation from the company. Uh, in terms of their pharmaceutical business, which was Demersh, their RT Pharma Labs listing is expected by December 2022. All the approvals are in place for this business. It is trading at 24 times FI24 EPS. This is after removing the impact of pharma business, but still not very, not very expensive, but not very cheap as well. And the kind of growth that we are seeing at these levels, uh, yes, this is an expensive stock. Okay, expensive at 24 times, forward multiple, that's Aarti Industries for you. TCNS, uh, the owner of women's brand Aurelia and W, is surging in trade after reports suggest that multiple companies are looking to acquire a near 30% stake in the company. This would be the promoter's stake. Mangalam is here with the details. Mangala. Well, that's correct. So TCNS is uh, buzzing uh, on the back of news reports, which suggest that maybe the promoter's take of the company is up for grabs. And there are a lot of takers for that. Reports suggest that, you know, it uh, uh, the suitors would be Reliance Retail. There's Nika, which is looking at it. Aditya Birla Fashion Retail and even Trend have shown interest in uh, buying TA Associates, 29.24% stake in the company. TA Associates, as we know, is a private equity firm, which is also the promoter of uh, uh, TCNS clothing. Reports also suggest that not just these companies, we have a couple of uh, PE PEs showing interest as well, TPG Capital, as well as the likes of Advent. Uh, TCNS clothing, of course, as we know it, as the owner of uh, women's wear brands like W as well as Aurelia. Uh, CNBC TV 18 had broken uh, the story back in August itself. Nisha had alluded to it that TCNS clothing is on the block or the promoter's take is on the block. And now this seems to be a follow-up story on that one. And the fact that now the names are mentioned and the number of suitors are mentioned, the stock is seeing some traction. Okay, all right. So that is about TCNS, one of the big buzzers in the broader markets. The other one which is doing well is Mazga Dock Ship Builders. It has been an outperformer for a long time now. Posted a strong set of quarter two numbers. Earlier today, we caught up with Sanjeev Singhal, who's the director of finance at Mazga Dock Ship Builders. Listen in to what he had to say in terms of guidance for FI23, and they've revised it upwards. We would like to revise our guideline with respect to FY23 to around 25 to 30% of growth compared to previous year. So we are expecting somewhere around 7,400, 7,500 in case all the things go as per our plan. So that would be a revenue guidance for the current year. Margins, we don't expect a significant change. However, there would be a positive effect definitely on account of raising the fixed costs as the volumes go up. 
So I would not be very particular about the margins. Uh, we would be maintaining a similar kind of a trend. Uh, last year also the margins were better and uh, a slight improvement could be there based on the uh, higher volumes. Okay, with that is a wrap on Midcap Radar. But as we do that, we'll leave you with some important market comments from CLSE's Lawrence Belanco. We saw uh, sentiment extremes into the October lows, as well as a number of uh, market divergences that has led to the, the current rally that we've seen uh, play out across global markets. And, and, and our work that we've done on our cycles into 2023 does, does suggest that we do overshoot uh, the upside and, and we think the S&P can trade above its 200-day moving average. And the Nifty on the back of that should trade to a new all-time highs and, and we get an upside target closer to the 20,100 area for the Nifty into the first quarter of next year. If we look at the Indian markets uh, th through the first half of this year, we, we found that support around the 15,500 area. And we do think that's shifted up towards the 17,000 to 16,900 area. So that, that should be a sort of a key floor heading into the first quarter. One of the key setups that we're looking for into 2023 is a more significant top in that dollar index. So in the near term, there is support between 103 and 105. It's basically the 200 day, but also the 2017 and 2020 highs for the dollar index. Uh, and at some stage uh, in the second quarter, we do think the dollar does get a, a rebound, but that rebound forms a lower high and, and that's part of the topping pattern that we see for the dollar in, in 2023. Uh, and ultimately, uh, towards the end of uh, 2023, we think the dollar index is trading back towards 95. And that should put the Indian rupee back towards uh, 75, towards uh, year end of 2023.